Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and one of the perks of being a YouTuber is that from time to time you're getting some kind of interesting hardware, like this thing what I have on my bench today and how do you think? What is it? It's a, it's a charger, it's a, I don't know, a tester or something. It's a servo tester. Um, it's not like your everyday regular servo tested. It's kind of bigger. It's called the Toolkit ST8. And to be honest, it's not only a servo tested because yes, it is a servo tested tester. It has a pot oh, it has a potentiometer over here. It has a power input for your up to 6S LiPo over here. It has a servo outputs. To be honest, it has one, two, three, four, and then one more four. It has four servo outputs. So I can connect a servo to, no, like that, to a device and then I can enable this thing and you see, if I move the potentiometer then something is happening. Now, <laughs> that's not all. Let me zoom in a little because this thing really can do slightly more than just showing you if the servo is working by the moving of the potentiometer. You see, you see this graph. You have a, this graph actually shows you how much current the servo is consuming. To be honest, I never really knew how much current a servo might be consuming because right now it says that the servo was consuming almost half an ampere of the current. That's kind of more than usually you expect. No, no, that's not all. The thing can be also used on each channel separately. And for example, let's say that I don't want to use the potentiometer. I would like to make this uh, servo move left and right. I can go into each channel and change the input of the inch For example, right now, linear sweep. Cool. Cool. If you have a big aeroplane and you want to check if the, for example, ailerons or the flaps are working smoothly, this is something you might be interested in and still you have the current readouts on the channel. Not all. That's not all. One more time, the stuff can be used for slightly, slightly more things than just. Let me stop the internal. How to stop it? Yeah, let me stop the internal and right now we can try connecting this thing to a receiver I have over here because this thing can also be used as the PWM, uh, PPM and S-Boost tester. If you are not sure if your receiver is working like you expect it to work, you can always get the ST8 and uh, you see you can test each channel separately each of the 16 channels and assign this to a server. So after all really like a pretty interesting design, uh, not maybe for the regular uh, drone user because usually drone users have no really need to test any servo but if you are flying in the bigger airplanes with a lot of servos a lot of mechanization over here such a such a funky little no not that little because it's kind of relatively biggish uh, for a serv oh, for a servo tester at least uh, but it can have multiple multiple usages I only wish that Honestly, the thing was a few bucks cheaper because it's not really super cheap. On the other hand, it to really have a few few interesting features like the SBus decoder, PWM input, PPM input, four channels. You can assign functions to a to a servo, check the power usage of the servo, check the the smoothness if there are no breaks. So really interesting design. If only was a few bucks cheaper. But still, if you are invested like few thousand euros for super advanced model or a few hundred euros for a super advanced model, it's a probably kind of good idea to have the 
possibility to really check what's happening with your server and to debug if the servers are working. If I would have to find another problem with the device is that over here it also has the XT60 output but I'm sorry why this is the mail plug? Why can I connect the battery to the output? I would personally I would expect that if I connect the input XT60 here would be a female plug so I can connect some receiver. Oh, I don't really get it but but who gets it? Oh, and by the way, we are ending. If you were wondering what kind of um, thing I have over here, and you are not a Slavic, do not come from the Eastern Europe, uh, let me explain. It's a very Slavic thing. Uh, in Poland, it's called żur. It's a soup made from fermented cereal. In this very specific case, it's a soup made from fermented wheat flour. It's amazing, really. If you ever come to Eastern Europe, get yourself some żur, white borscht uh, or um, with many different regional names. Really amazing, amazing soup. It can be served with meat, with egg, in bread. Really like amazing, amazing stuff. If you ever can try żur, try żur. It's super, like like the protic Slavic, protic Slavic advice. That's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.